Hello guys, and welcome to part 3! Still got a few more to do on this one. Um, here's a few nuts and bolts the, uh, that comes with the, with the kit. Um, well, you can buy the screws separately. Um, these are the nuts and bolts we need for the motors as well. I had to order these separate on eBay. I only had some uh, temporary screws holding these motors on, so I'm going to uh, use the screws that I bought, or the bolts rather, um, and we're going to secure them a bit better. So we'll take out the temporary ones I put in there, and then uh, we'll have four decent bolts on um, each motor to hold it onto the arm. Don't over tighten them, otherwise you'll. Uh, you strip the, the thread at the bottom of the motor. And once we've done this one, we'll proceed to do the other three. Uh, make sure they're all tight. You don't want your motor flying off. And like I said, make sure you don't over tighten them, otherwise uh, you'll strip the threads. Right, there we go, that's those done. What I'm going to have to do now is double check the uh, these here just to make sure they're tight. Uh, you might have to take these out again, depending on what legs you have. Um, I mean, this is upside down. But there'll be the mounting points for your legs, probably, depending on whether you have a skid or not. Um, or just the legs. I don't know yet. I might put some on there, on here, so I don't know. We shall see. Right, now for the next job. Um, what we're going to do here is we're going to solder on our power leads onto the uh, board down here. We've got our power cable. This is 18 gauge. 18 silicone wire. But that should be plenty. That's your power cable. Got that off eBay as well. You're probably going to want probably about four inches. That should be plenty. You don't want too much because the battery has some on as well. So we'll cut that there. Strip the ends on these, ready for tinning or soldering. I just use wire cutters, but if you've got strippers, even better. Solder these two ends. Solder them and put them on the board. We're going to take one of these as well, which is an XT60, and this is your connector for your battery. This is the battery. This is too small. This battery. This is just a spare. But just to show you, this is your. Um, this is how the connectors go together. your connector. What you'll notice is there's a plus and a minus on the connector to help you to know which side you need to solder the cable to. Obviously the red for positive and uh, black for negative. Solder them in there. Right, 
Now I'm going to proceed to tin the ends or solder the ends of the uh, battery leads ready to go into the connectors. Um, what we'll do is we're going to fill up the connectors with solder like we did um, on the other connectors for our ESCs and um, we'll solder them in with some uh, heat shrink as well. Now we've got a heat shrink as well. I'm going to slide that over the end. Cut it to size. And then uh, shrink it on. the red on the red and uh, the black on the black depending on the, what heat shrink you have I guess as long as you know which is which and you're uh, ready to solder it onto the board now using a direct heat source um, I just use a, a lighter because it's easier and I can keep it in the toolkit. Heat it up, don't go too mad or as you burn it all, and uh, shrink it in around your cable. Right, now that's done. Uh, we need to uh, solder it onto the board. You can see the red on the positive and the uh, black on the negative. We've pre-tinned the eight ends of the cables and um, we also had some solder already on the uh, board so all we've got to do is heat it up and um, solder it all together. Now we've done that we've got these power leads as well. Um, if you need extra ones we can all solder those onto there as well. Um, you may need these for your receiver and your um, flight controller. Depends on your wiring setup. Now the leads are done, we're going to uh, mount the flight controller. I'm going to mount mine on the top here. It's entirely up to you whether you want to put it on the top or underneath. Um, I have chose to mount mine on the top for easy access. Now we've got the uh, KK2 board flight controller. I think uh, this is a KK 2.15 I think which is the latest version at this time at the moment you'll have to check I think this one was on uh, eBay for 15 pounds or something like that but as you can see it's got an on-screen display um, which makes it fully programmable which makes it a lot easier so you don't have to use a PC to uh, program it and um, I've never built one before and I'd rather do it like this because it seems a bit easier. I think it's self-explanatory. Um, well, I'll show you that when we come to set it up. But what we're going to do now is um, mount it on the top of the board here. You need to decide what configuration you're going to use um, as to whether it's going to be the X formation or um, whether it's going to be in a cross. Now's the dis time to decide as well whether you um, how where you want your power leads 
whether it's going to be the left or the right so you need to decide which is going to be the front or the back of your quad I don't think it really matters it's a personal preference I think really but I'm going to keep this one on the right because I'm using the right hand so I'll keep that on there flight controller on the board um, has to be pointing forwards obviously depending on your configuration and obviously that in this configuration if you have it in this cross formation it's that got to go that way um, but obviously me I'm going to have, have cameras and bits and pieces so I'm going to have it th that way um, but it, the uh, the, lo the holes don't line up which are in those places there but I'm gonna have to make up a little board which I've done here that's gonna mount on the top there like that and then I'm gonna use some double-sided sticky pads um, which will also give this a bit of cushioning and um, I'm gonna mount it onto the uh, little bit of piece of plastic as you can see I've fitted the double-sided tape on the back of here make sure that's stuck on very well um, you can buy proper pads off of ebay but these are just as good because it's the same thing peel off your sticky sticky bits <laughs> make sure it's positioned squarely over your uh, little plastic thing that's your front which is the top there that's always got to be facing forwards basically you just press it down and stick it on so you press it down firmly and make sure it's um, it's stuck give it a little bit of a twist just to make sure it's properly there you can take those bolts back out and give it a real good squeeze together I mean this one comes in a case you can get a KK board that doesn't actually contain the case but then uh, I went for the case because I found it probably easier to mount because I can use the uh, double sided tape oh uh, the um, double sided sticky pads right thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in part 4